In this video guys, we're talking sword and shield techniques from the early medieval period. That's coming up. Alrighty guys, today we're talking sword and shield techniques for, for the early medieval period. That is for the Vikings, the Saxons, the Normans and that kind of thing. Dismounted and away from the shield wall, key points. So shield wall techniques are an entirely different story and that's for a video that we'll probably do in a few months time. Today we're talking sort of small groups of people or one person versus two or three or one one on one type tactics. Alrighty, so, now before we get going, I'm going to talk through a couple of really key points. We are not actually training today, so I'm not wearing armour, I'm not wearing a helmet, and I'm not wearing gloves. All three things I would be wearing ordinarily when I'm training. I'm also using a practice sword. I'm also using a practice sword. You must never train with a live blade, it's always going to go wrong. And the injuries are obviously quite catastrophic. There's a lot of videos out there on YouTube about that kind of thing. Alrighty, so, the stance as I'm approaching a, a, an enemy target is going to be a split stance with my non-dominant leg in front of me and my shield outstretched, anticipating what we call a bind. That is when I make contact with my opponent. My sword typically in a high guard position for myself. That's how I train, that's how I fight. There are a number of other guard positions that we'll talk about in other videos coming up. The other point I'll, I'll mention today is that Matthew's arm is actually broken and is still recovering about eight weeks on. So I really don't want to be putting Matthew through too much strain and stress at the moment. As I approach Matthew, my key point is I want to get on top because on top I'm going to have the advantage. I have a height advantage over Matthew, but that's not necessarily catastrophic for him. Second key point, edge alignment of your weapons. So you want to be hitting on basically on a perpendicular angle, both of which I can use to leverage. The three phases of the bind basically are like so. So outstretch your shield, like so. Right, my goal is to get on top of Matthew. Outstretch your shield. Rightio, edge to edge is the first phase of the bind. I'm looking to manoeuvre my shield to get on top of Matthew. If I can do that, I'm in a much better position. Rightio. The next phase is the edge to the boss. Already Matthew is struggling and I can outmaneuver him and outposition him with my sword. Because his view is obstructed, because his view is obstructed, I've got more advantage. Although it's still not catastrophic for Matthew, Matthew can still go for my legs. And in the early medieval period, absolutely, my legs would be largely unprotected. Phase three, all right, is basically boss to head. I've won the fight. There's little Matthew can do. I can go in at his legs. I can go in from the top. Remember, the whole purpose of an army, the whole purpose of infantry has never changed. And that is to close with and kill the enemy. That's how battles have been won forever. Let's do a bit of a walk through, talk through and then we'll leave it there. Okay, so I'm standing off with my opponent. I'm looking for his weaknesses. 
where am I in the, in the whole fight period? Is this a home gang that is like a Viking style duel? Or is this uh, once the shield wall has collapsed and we're breaking into the melee that we would have seen at battles such as Stamford Bridge and Hastings and so on? Edge to edge. Shield boss to edge. Right, I'm positioning myself around. I've got Matthew's legs. I can come in and finish him off with a sword strike to the back. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.